Okay, bonus video. Since this is an Illustrator class and Illustrator is mostly about vectors, I'm going to show you two different ways to add drop shadows using vectors only. The first way, which is by far the easiest way, is to give each layer a flat drop shadow. So what we're going to do first is select all of our layers except maybe the background layer, go to our appearance panel and delete the drop shadow effect. Thank you. Now go back to your layers and then lock every single layer except the layer that you're going to add a drop shadow to. In my case it's layer 3. Then you duplicate that layer. So I'm going to duplicate layer 3, rename it layer whatever shadow and then drag it beneath the layer that you're working on. Then lock your layer and then now select your layer or the layer shadow and make sure that it has a black fold. Then what you're going to do is with your selection tool you're going to command select a hole or maybe pieces of paper or shapes on top and shift and command select the other hole. You're then going to press shift down so that the shapes move down or the holes move down and there you have a beginning of a flat drop shadow. What we can do now just to beef it up is to increase your stroke width. I'm just going to change this to 10 like so and then you change your opacity to between 10 and 40 percent or whatever you like really. So I'm going to change mine to 40 and there you have a flat drop shadow for one layer. Do this for each layer and you'll end up with something that looks really good and surprisingly a lot like real paper. You can decrease the shadow layer's opacity the closer they get to the top that way it doesn't look too harsh. And the second way is a bit more complex but you end up with a nice gradient drop shadow. So if you zoom into a drop shadow you'll see the bands that make it up going from dark to light. We're going to manually replicate this with strokes and the blend tool. So what you want to do first of all is to select all of your layers except your background layer. Go to your appearance panel and remove your drop shadow. Okay. Then you go to your layers and you lock all of your layers except for the layer that you want to work with. I'll be working with layer 3, okay? And then you duplicate this layer twice. So I'm going to say duplicate layer 3 and duplicate layer 3 again. I can then hide layer 3 or the layer that you're working with and rename one of them to starting shadow. So layer 3 starting shadow and layer 3 ending shadow. Okay, I'm then going to hide all of my layers except for the starting shadow. I can then select them and let's change the fill color to a blue or a green. Something a bit weird, something that makes it quite known that we're working with it. We're then going to expand it using the Pathfinder tool. This is really useful if you've used compound shapes like we have. So I'm just going to expand it and then I'm going to add a stroke. Just one point or one pixel, black is fantastic. The smaller the stroke width, the smoother the gradient, but one pixel or one point should be great. I'm then going to check on my stroke options. You can access this little panel by going window and stroke, which is over here. And then you make sure that your aligned stroke is set to outside. Now you can set your, your full color to transparent. That is this layer done. We go back to our layers panel we can lock this or just hide it and then we show our layer 3 ending shadow layer. We do the exact same thing here, let's choose a weird and wonderful color. We then expand it and then we add a stroke. This time I'm going to go for something like 20 pixels or a 20 point stroke and make sure that the align stroke is set to outside. You can see what happens when you align stroke, when you align stroke to outside here. So that would be center, that would be inside and that would be outside. So outside is the best for what we're working with here. We then want to say uh, object expand appearance and now this creates uh, a full from the stroke and then with our pathfinder tool we just unite these two shapes together and let's make this a weird and wonderful color again and then we add a stroke again. One point we set it to outside and the stroke color now we can change this to white and now we're going to blend it from a black stroke to a white stroke. We then set our full color back to transparent. And now if we go back to our layers panel and we show the, the starting shadow, we'll have a black line and a white line. Fantastic. So now if we cut these, 
and create a new layer called layer 3 shadow and we can hide the, the ending shadow and starting shadow and we then paste in place so command F or you can say edit uh, paste in place we have these two lines or two shapes with strokes on them so then we go here and we say object blend make so now we start blending them together you can see that there's a stroke that is in between white and black it's a gray line which is fantastic so with your blended object selected you go to object blend blend options and we check this preview checkbox and we change this from smooth color to specified steps and in here because we're going from something like 1 pixels to 20 pixels in terms of our shadow we want to change this to 20 or maybe even 21 steps you just check that and check that again you'll see that hey that looks kind of like a drop shadow so we go okay this is pretty much it except I like to then expand this object further so I go object expand appearance which is fantastic and if you zoom in you'll see that hey that looks pretty drop shadow ish if we then go object and expand again sometimes this helps it out makes it look a little bit better and you can see we zoomed it at like 1200% here so at 100% you don't even notice the gaps in the bands with this selected I can then change its uh, blend mode to multiply and I can change its opacity to about 40% and there we have a really nice looking drop shadow and it's all vector but there is a problem and I'll show you what the problem is now if we drag this layer 3 shadow underneath and we show all of our layers again except for these ending ones which I'll delete now except for these starting and ending ones which I'll delete now we can see that when we start to actually move our shadow about our layer 3 shadow where is it there we go if we move this down a bit you'll see that ah there's actually nothing happening there so what we need to do here is just undo we need to go to our layer 3 and we need to select it copy it and then go to our layer 3 shadow double click on it so it goes into the group or into the isolation mode and paste and make sure that this has a black fill color and then when we leave here we now have this sort of an effect it has a full color and it has the gradients all together so I'm going to zoom back out here just put all of these back and then I'm going to move this about so you select your layer 3 shadow and I just like to go shift and press down on the keyboard just to give it a bit of an offset and there we go we have a drop shadow a gradiented drop shadow and it's all in vector apply the same set of steps for each layer and your whole illustration will be in vector you can see that the process is pretty long and a bit complex so I'd only recommend going this route if you absolutely need smooth vector drop shadows also you may run into some problems especially if your holes are really small because as soon as you start to duplicate a layer and increase its stroke width to 20 you'll see that wow there's actually separate holes that appear so you'll just have to work around this uh, using the blend tool and stroke tools to make your drop shadows so that can be a little bit tricky but I'm sure you can work it out if you're not precious about vector drop shadows then using the regular drop shadow effect is much easier way quicker and more flexible so that's the bonus video i hope you liked it and uh see you soon